Hey guys, Pilot Geek here, and today we're going to be looking at some of these robots I designed. Hey guys, Pilot Geek here. Today we're going to be looking at some of these robots that I designed. This was originally designed to be a simple robotics platform for something like an Arduino. And uh, they're really simple in that they only use two motors, one for steering and one for locomotion. Um, while I did plan an Arduino version of this that I'm just getting around to now, my original designs did not use any sort of microcontroller at all. So if there's no microcontroller in these, well, how do they work? So I've always been interested in robotics ever since I was a kid. And in high school, a few basic electronics classes got me to the point where I could create some simple circuits. At one point, I stumbled upon a circuit which could control servos using just a 555 timer along with some passive components. The voltage on an input directly controls the output of the servo. This became the basis for a few of my early robots, such as this tricycle robot. Nowadays, 3D printing has allowed me to get a lot more creative, so I decided to try creating a walking robot in which I could use the same logic as the old version. The leg mechanism is very simple, requiring only two motors for locomotion and directional control. One set of legs is literally a tripod that gets picked up and set back down over and over. The opposing set of legs works similar to a rowboat, working off a hinge halfway through which inverts the motion, creating an alternate set of legs which work in tandem to the tripod. Turning is as simple as orienting the gearbox to effectively row the mechanism in a different direction, changing the synchronization of the legs in turn. Initially, I planned on hooking my old circuit up to this design, but I knew I could do better. This would be the ultimate 555 timer based robot. I worked out a way to control a sonar sensor using only 555 timers, along with using another set of 555 timers to coordinate the head to scan its environment on regular intervals. That way I could survey the environment to prevent it from getting stuck on things it otherwise would not have seen. The old servo driver circuit is used as the core to tie everything into and control the motors. Each core circuit is tied to the input from the light sensors, along with outputs from the sonar and timer circuits, and these analog values all directly are converted into motor positions. Because so many inputs and outputs are directly fed to this analog rail, these voltage rails function as sort of a basic analog computer by adding and subtracting all stimuli and weighing them together to output an action depending on which input is the strongest. This leads to some interesting behavior. I had intended the sonar circuit to always initiate a turn, but a bright light on one of the sensors has enough pull to outweigh the turn circuitry. This results in the robot wanting to turn away from an object, but becoming interested in bright lights, pausing in place seeming to contemplate its decision. These types of interactions were unintended, but give it a somewhat lifelike quality. The unintended and infinite number of combinations of inputs really do make this kind of a unique seeming robot. I think replicating this behavior in a microcontroller would be kind of difficult. I've tried making similar robots using logic gates and other methods, but I can't capture this lifelike feeling I get with the original robot. The smaller orange robot, well, I consider him more of a failed experiment, though a fun one. Well, maybe I'm using the term fun loosely, as this was actually quite a frustrating build, using mostly point-to-point -point enamel wire. This one uses simple digital logic gates to control its function. The core is a decade counter, which is wired up to some diodes to create sort of a basic ROM type of array for pre-programmed commands, and logic gates to incorporate inputs and states. Upon the sonar being triggered, it'll reset back to the first instruction, executing instructions to turn. After one cycle completes, a flag is set to skip these turn instructions until the next sonar detection. Likewise, a bit is also set for the last direction that it turns in to try to make it reverse direction whenever the sonar is triggered. I thought the added complexity and programmability of this robot would have made it a little bit more interesting and complex than my old robot, but it ended up just feeling a little too, well, robotic, because it just follows the same set of commands over and over and over again, leading to very predictable behavior that just isn't as interesting as my other robot. Recently I decided to revisit this project in the smaller form, this time using an Arduino Nano to make things a little bit cleaner and then I can play around with actually programming it instead of having to, you know, hardwire everything. Um, if you're interested in the Arduino version of this, uh, let me know in the comments because uh, I'll definitely make some follow-up videos to show my findings with it and share some of the code. If you'd like to use this robot chassis in your own project and also help to support my channel, please visit my website, pilothobbies.com where I have the STL files available for purchase. Each download includes basic documentation, along with the source files in step format if you'd like to tweak the design for your own purposes. Alternatively, I'll also have the files linked on my Thingiverse page. 
I hope this video was either educational or entertaining, and as always, thanks for watching.